This is part three of a three-part series about the animation player in Godot. In the last videos, I talked about property tracks, audio tracks, and Bezier tracks. In this one, I talk about method tracks, animation playback tracks, and 3D transform tracks. And there's a little bonus about 3D that has nothing to do with animation player, but I bet you're gonna like it. I bet you're gonna like it. I bet you don't know it. <laughs> you're gonna like it. Promise. So there we go, we've set up characters. But that's not all that happens, right? There's a bunch of other stuff and there's a bunch of other things we've got to talk about, right? So to coordinate the whole scene, this is probably something you're going to want. Like if you're making a cut scene, this is a nice little way to do it. The animation playback track. And we also have a method track here. So this is a case where I have this scene coordinator, I don't know if scene is right, cut, I mean cut scene when I say scene. Um, so what this is gonna do, now that I have all the characters animations, I can use, use those whenever I want by putting in an animation key. So let's, let's delete these and see. So first thing I have, I have a camera, right? And the camera is going to pan. So I use an animation player also to pan the camera. For cutscenes, this is great because you, you're not, you don't have to do any code for it, right? Like, it's complicated to write code to get the camera to go where you want. And you don't have to bother with, like, trying to follow the player. You can just tell it exactly where you want it to go anytime. It's great. Great for cutscenes. So then I want them to play there because right now they're going to just sit there static, right? Because I didn't have them play any animations. So I have it set so that it plays space to... So what we want is we want them to play their animations. We can do that by doing the animation playback. Add track, animation playback track. And when you do this, you for each track, you have to pick a specific animation player. And you can't pick yourself. You can't play other animations that your own one has. So you have to make more animation players. So in this case, uh, let's do AK1 and add another one. Okay, so right away when we start this, this is the start of the cutscene. I'll put one in for Val, and we go up here in the track edit, and we pick walk. So that will make her start her animation. And it's awesome. You can do everything in the editor, too. Like, it plays the animations in the editor. Not everything. You can't run everything in the editor, and I'll show you one of, one of those. Right, so nice, right? And now... We want to also start, she's going to be uh, sitting, she's twirling her glass. She can just start off twirling her glass. So that plays those animations. The next type of track we have is the method, call method track. So I want the dialogue to start after Val has made it all the way over here. So I add an, a call method track. I pick my dialogue node, okay, and then it adds a track. You can have more than one method call track for one function so that you can put in different methods at the same time. So sometimes you might want to do that. To actually pick the method you want to call, you do insert key, and then this will give you access to every method that that node has. And it's both your own method. So these are the ones I defined, and then these are the ones that are in the in Gitto's out of the box. So I want it to start the dialogue. So that's what we'll launch. And this this is the one type of track that doesn't play in the editor. Because it can't run code unless it's a tool. So I hit start. And then it starts the dialogue. That's how the dialogue starts. Easy peasy, right? Uh, so we'll look at the script. The, the way I'm starting the animation itself is I have an input event that watches for spacebar. So I hit spacebar and then it just runs this. And then fires everything off. And that's basically the whole cutscene. The dialogue system, if you want to know about the dialogue system, I got it from a great YouTube video that I will link in the comments and I'll put a little card in that you can click on. But I didn't come up with the dialogue system myself. Um, yeah, so see, I have I have her. Every time I hit space, it starts the animation over. 
and I can put their name up there. That's all that's all tutorialed in this guy's YouTube video. So go watch that guy's YouTube video. Really, really. I added this thing where where they they pop in and out with kind of gray themselves out. I added that to the guy's script. But that's for another time. If you want to know how I did that, ask in the comments and I'll explain it. Hope that explains some things. Oh, I told you I was gonna do a uh, 3D 3D Okay, so doing 3D make a mesh. Add a new material spatial leaves. How do you do it right? I change the albedo. Add a light to the scene. Okay, so we have a light, we have a cube. New animation. Spin. 3D transform trap. Now, this is something you want to use instead of doing this. This is bad. Show you what's bad. Transform, I think. Transition. Don't do this. That is just not good. For complicated reasons. Just trust me, okay? Just don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Okay. So then the way you put keys in this track, whenever you hit, go down to transform, and you hit key, get rid of this. No. No. That's not what you do. Don't do this. No. Wrong, right? Here's how you do it. Insert key. That puts the key wherever the cube currently is. Move it over here. You gotta put the playhead first because whenever you click the playhead around, it'll it'll forward it to that position. And if I don't have another key, it's just gonna stay in place. So I move it out here, right click, insert another key. Okay, presto, right? But I didn't say I was gonna transform, I said I was gonna spin it. You do want it to center back there. Um, so then all we have to do is key, this is already keying the whole transform, right? This keys location, rotation, and scale. So rather than, rather than, uh, do it like that, we're going to hit E, we're going to change the rotation degrees. Loop, it should just see there you go now it's safe to do <laughs> so then any kind of thing you want like moving things around use that easy right maybe maybe i want to Maybe a, a bonus round that has nothing to do with animation players. Let's save this. Spinning. What's it? What's it called? Triangle. Thing. Another thing we're going to have to do here for what I'm going to show you is. Put a script on it. Script on this. So when you have a script on an animation player, just run. Play. Okay, it's not a key. <laughs> Also, if you've watched my naming video, look at all the sins I'm committing. I'm not naming any of this stuff. You're supposed to rename your nodes, but I'm going to throw this out in a minute. So. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so now that's a spinny cube and we have a camera. Let me just run and make sure the camera is looking at something right that I want it to look at. Yeah, let's move the camera down. Change things in Godot. In the editor, they change. That's better. I don't even have to restart. Okay, is that good? That's good. So just because I want to use every kind of animation track in my little nice cutscene, I'm going to add a 3D spinning cube. Do it. Do it with a viewport. Let's move. Okay, the viewport itself is not a object that shows you anything by default. You need to have some kind of object. You can do it in other ways. There's there's viewport rects the control type node, but I want to use a sprite. I don't want to. I don't want that. Something important that is. I don't know if it's a bug really. You need to put the viewport before the sprite if you're going to do this. In the in the hierarchy, and the reason for this is that the sprite. Well, let me let me go over this first. So to get a sprite to show a viewport, you go out to new viewport texture. And you pick the viewport you want to show. Okay. You have to give the viewport a size. Uh, I'm gonna give it just 640 by 360. The entire size of my. It's gonna be gray. So the sprite is just gonna show gray. Yeah. So That's not what we want. We want it transparent. So what do you do? You go to viewport and you go to transparent background. But it's empty. It's not showing anything. But you saw it showed gray. So that means it is working. The sprite is showing what's in the viewport. So in order to show something 3D, we do instance child scene and we say, what did I call it? Spinning triangle thing. Now I have instanced the spinny triangle thing. I've jumped into the 3D view. I'm still in my 2D scene. You can have 3D objects and 2D objects in the same scene at the same time. Under a viewport. See something? See something that appeared? There it is. There's my sprite. And now the sprite is showing the spinny viewport. I don't know what else? There it is, man. So because we have the camera in the viewport within the scene, the viewport shows what the camera is seeing. So you can move this camera around. Click So to go back and forth between the, the, two, the 2D view and the 3D view, see I moved the camera and now it shows a different part of the viewport. And this is the wrong direction. I don't want it that direction. I want it to go up. Oh, I'm selecting it. So viewport rendering. Render target. V flip, there it is. V flip. Nice. There's probably a reason that viewports show things upside down, but I don't know that. So sorry. And then because this is a sprite, I can move it around anywhere I want. You can do anything that you can do with a sprite. The little viewport has a 3D thing inside it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love Godot. See how easy that was? It's so easy. This is really fun. This is a really fun thing to use. Maybe instead of uh, the laser, someday I could make a cool effect in 3D that comes down. But I think Castlevania, I think Symphony of the Night actually does something like this at some point, right? Some of the, some of the Castlevanias do render 3D models. And, but I bet it wasn't as easy as this is for them. <laughs> do that stuff on Super Nintendo and PlayStation and stuff. Anyway, hope you learned something. <laughs>